thank you for an amazing, uh, amazing welcome. My father just turned 80. And my father, yeah, if you want to pl applaud for that, that's, that's thank you. Um, my father turned 80 and he retired last June after 54 years as a general practitioner, a family doctor. 54 years. So my father, 80 years old, 54 years as a family doctor, I said, Dad, why did you work as a doctor for so long? And he said, Robin, because my patients needed me. See, to lead is to serve. He did it with dignity and grace and mastery and excellence. You absolutely have to be building the leadership capabilities and the performance of the people that you work with. And my dad took out this Sanskrit poem and he put it on a car, uh, it was like the back of a prescription pad. And he taped it on our fridge door so my brother and I could see it every morning. And I'm very much a family man. And I'm really proud to share with you that someone extraordinarily special, this doesn't happen very often, but someone extraordinarily special is here with me today. And it's my unbelievable son, Colby. Wow. Who's, who is uh, in his third year of law school at University of Liverpool. Stand up, please, Colby. Oh. And so, on the piece of paper, it simply said, it was the words of Rabindranath Tagore, and it said, spring has passed, summer has gone, and winter is here, and the song I meant to sing remains unsung, for I have spent my days stringing and unstringing my instrument. As I got older, I asked my father, I said, Dad, what was that poem all about? And he said, Robin, that was a poem written by a man whose heart was filled with regret over a life half lived. He was always getting ready to be a leader. He was always getting ready to bring on his creativity. He was always getting ready to save her life. He was always getting ready to be a graceful, dignified, optimistic human being. But he got busy being busy, so the great song that his life was meant to be died within him. I'm just speaking truth here today. I don't need to be liked. I think you can be liked. You can have a need to be liked, or you can show leadership. You can't do both. When I work with the billionaires, they do not care what other people think of them. Are you Write these down. You want to write down at least 50, 10 pages of notes for me today. If I do my job, you're going to get at least 10 pages of notes. But if you don't capture it, if you're checking your phone right now, if you're not being a rigorous student, how can you go back home and calibrate and granulate and study the notes? And the billionaires don't care what other people think. Please write this down. The 95% loves distraction. The top 5% adores production. One of my favorite overheads is this one right here, he says, you're looking for an aggressive, persistent salesperson, like for example, the one who sold you that suit. <laughs> of a business builder, and usually you don't hear this at business conferences, the real work of a business builder is on your interior empires. So, I mean, one of the things about the billionaires, they just don't give up. It sounds very obvious. They are ridiculously confident and they don't give up. You build that by working on your interior empire. One of the things about the billionaires, it's 11 o'clock at night and they're still on fire. Oh, they have natural energy. No, they protect their energy. One of the things about billionaires, the best ones, they want to give. That's an interior one. So he didn't really care about what other people thought about him, but he was an artist and he was a man of love and he was a man of authenticity. And don't say authenticity is weak. Authenticity is related to mastery. If you are not authentic, you won't live your goals. You won't live your mastery. And I want to offer 
Martin Luther King to you, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. What am I talking about here? You know, before you know it, you will be at the end of your life. When I was writing The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, I came across a curious story of an Indian Maharaja. And every morning, this Indian Maharaja would celebrate his own funeral, complete with music and flowers. And all the while, this Maharaja would be chanting, I have lived fully, I have lived fully, I have lived fully. 